And now, today's adventure of Outer Scope One, ready for blast off. Our Skylab is all built, but now we have to figure out how to make it fly. Oh, yeah. Well, we've got to think of some way to get our Skylab off the ground. Otherwise, we really can't play the game. But what's the difference? Isn't this just pretend? Well, isn't it? Come on, Cynthia. Use your imagination. This is the best game we ever played. Propellers! Could we use propellers? That's how my model planes work. Look, Henry, this isn't one of your model planes. It's a great big spaceship. Oh, yeah. Come on, Henry, don't look so sad. At least you're trying. That's more than someone else around here is doing. All right, I could take a hint. Hmm, I suppose we could use some kind of fuel, maybe a gas. What kinds of gases are there? Something light, not a liquid. We need the airy kind. One that would help us rise. Rise? You say this gas should make us rise? Uh, what do you know about gases, Cynthia? Watch that tongue, Edgar. I might be able to solve this problem. Lots of times I help my mother bake bread and... Bake bread? What's that got to do with us? Plenty, Eleanor. You see, in baking, you start with a little lump of dough and end up with a big puffed up loaf. And you know why? 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 No, tell us. Because of the yeast. How does yeast work? It gives off some kind of gas. That's why the bread gets so big and airy. The yeast makes it rise. And if it works for bread, I don't see why it won't do the same for us. It sounds awful simple. Don't you need something to go with it to make it work? Only water. Hey, Cynthia's discovered oh, the answer. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And if you add sugar, it works even faster. Fantastic. We've got it. Well, what do you know? She figured it out. Good thinking, Cynthia. Thanks, Eleanor. See, I knew I could help. Water. Sugar. And here's the yeast. We can mix it in this kettle. And attach it to this hose. The gas will rise up the hose. Through the roof. And the umbrellas will catch it and lift us way out there. It's beautiful, isn't it? I don't believe it. What shall we call it? It deserves a good name. Anyone have any ideas? Not me. I can't think of anything. Well, what do you think of this? Out of scope one. Out of scope, scope one. one. It's just right. Who gets to play captain? Willie ought to go first. He thought up the game. Good. Okay. Willie goes Good. first. Aw, oh, thanks, everyone. And then we'll take turns. Here, why don't we all write the name? Oh, good idea. S. C. O. T. E. Roman numeral one. Hey, what's in that trunk? Oh, lots of odds and ends. Mostly junk. But maybe they'll come in handy for emergencies. Emergencies? Well, we've got to be prepared. You can never tell what might happen in outer space. Hey, wait. I thought this was just pretend. Just a game. We're not really going to fly into outer space, are we? Who knows? Anyway, like I said, we've got to be prepared. Ooh, I'm not sure I like this game. Ah, oh, Cynthia, stop acting so scared. I am not scared. I was only asking sensible questions. 
anyway. I decided to take Betty with us. Why? Do you think she likes space travel? Do you think you do? Anyway, we might need her. Betty's very smart, you know. She can always find a way out of trouble. Not that I hope we have any. All right, crew. Let's get ready for liftoff. At your stations, please. Oh, boy, we're ready to play. Okay, crew. I'll give the orders in. Wait a minute. Is this trip for real? Cynthia, Outer Scope 1 is our ship, and we can take it wherever we want. Is everyone ready? Aye, aye, sir. Roger. Right, Roger. Roger. Aye, aye, sir. All right, then. Drop yeast. Sugar dropped. Pour water. Water poured. Look, Eleanor, it's bubbling. Countdown. Ten. Nine. Oh, boy. Eight. Seven. Six. What a game. Five. Four. We're almost done. Three, two, stop. One, off. Next time, shooting through space. It's time to tell a story. It's story telling time. Chip off the old block, chip off the old block. I was just a splinter off the street where I live. I'm a chip off the old block, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Les, what are you doing sitting here by yourself? You reminiscing? Yeah, I'm just sitting here on the stoop. It reminds me back home. Well, back home when I was growing up, you know, that I remember the sounds. People walking down the street, sounds in the evening. People playing with a tennis ball in the middle of the street and all that, man. I remember the sounds of... Lester, your mama call you. Stuff like that, man. Oh, wow. That's really nice. I remember that, man. It's kind of mixing the central mirror and thinking about those things. Really something. But do you remember any, really, the, the good moments, you know? I remember when we played basketball. I remember we used to play basketball in the vacant lot. Yeah, they used to have trailers over there, right? Yeah. Also, uh, you remember what we used as a basket? Yeah, you remember we used to take a bushel basket and cut the bottom out and put a backboard up on the, what you call those things? It's called, uh... Telephone pole. We didn't let you play basketball. They had to, man, because I owned the basketball. Nobody could play unless, you know, I let you play with the doll. Remember that? I remember that. Yeah. That's nice, huh? That's, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty nice. Yeah. Hey, can I ask you something? Uh, you remember that we used to play hide-and-go-seek? Hide-and-go-seek. Hide hide-and-go-seek. I remember that, man. I remember that little thing we used to say. When we were, like, doing hide-and-go-seek. What? We say, uh, last night, night before. 24 hours at my door. I got up, let him in. Hit him in the head with a rolling pin. We used to play hopscotch, too. You played hopscotch? Yeah. You know, I couldn't be around you guys all the time because, you know, you're bigger than I was. I remember when I was playing hopscotch, and then I made up the song. Really? What was it? It's like a, sometimes when things are rough, I try to lie to them all up. I run downstairs to the sidewalk and play hopscotch with my buttercup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I gotta ask you something else. What do you think of, like, uh, uh, being punished? Well, back in those days, I thought it was kind of cruel, man, for my folks to do that. But I found out, man, it was for my own good. Because, you know, like, I was out, you know, sitting on a stoop one night, and then I went down the street, you know. It's not 12 o'clock, and they say, stay out front. And I went down the street, man. And, you know, they really got me about that, man. But I found out it's all no good, you see. My mama loved me, so uh, she did it for a reason. So you figure, like, this kind of, like, punishment is, like, uh, good? Yeah, it's good. Because punishment, in that way, is like love. Oh, yeah, did you, I want to ask you something else. Uh, how about people calling your name? Well, it kind of got to me, man, but I figure it's like a little young game, man, when you're growing up, and you get the names, but uh, you don't let it bother you. You know, there's a song out 
well, it was out not too long ago, that really reminded you of like when we were back in the old neighborhood, remember? Oh, I know that song. Would you do it? Yeah, I'd do it right now. So. Touch your old soul and little white shoes. Talk us real proud of the little ditty rock and roll baby. Singing at the age of two. He can hardly talk, but he sure know how to sing the blues. Little Joe never sang out of tune, always in key. So the little rock and roll baby, Tata loves the way he grooves. Never heard a boy sing the way that little Joe would do. Born in a theater in Bloomfield, West Virginia. Now and Paul are traveling on the road. I worked hard all summer, so I filled in for the drummer. One night stands is one DJ for little Joe. Uh, 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 uh. La 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 la. That's what you call getting down. Brothers and sisters, let's rap about words. Have you ever said bus and sus instead of wash the dishes? You ever call a little kid a crumb crusher? Ever hear jazz? Have you ever called money bread? Or apple, or cake, or grape? If you have, you're using words and expressions originated by black Americans. Do you dig? I'm hip. That too. Dig? Hip and hep are all black American words meaning to understand. You don't have to pull my coattail. You mean I don't have to explain it to you. All of these words and phrases are what we call slang. It's a special language of words that don't appear in the standard dictionary. Why do we talk slang? Bend my ear, baby. Sometimes because there is no word in standard English that says what you want to say as accurately or as colorfully as the word you invent yourself. For example, in slang, a black man who acts like a white man is called an Oreo. Because an Oreo is a cookie that's black outside and white inside. There's no dictionary word as descriptive as that. Sometimes we speak slang because that's the way our friends talk, to be a part of the group. Share things with our friends. You've got to speak their language. Otherwise, you're out to lunch. Meaning you don't understand. Another reason slang is spoken is because it's a secret language. Only you and your friends know the meaning of the words. In England, the Cockneys speak a rhyming slang that only they understand. In Cockney, bread and honey equals money. Bread and honey rhymes with money. A secret language. Much of American slang started among the black people, and much of black slang came from black musicians, part of a secret language only other musicians understood. Until the code was broken and non-musicians picked it up. Slang may not be proper, but it certainly enriched our vocabularies. Groovy. If I tell you to cool it, I get all decked out in a new set of threads. If you're an eight ball, or a fat cat, you're feeling funky. Or all hung up. If you talk this way to describe who you are or how you feel, what to do or how to do it, you're speaking the slang of black Americans. Crazy. Right on. Dig you later, brothers and sisters. I'm a city planner. My job is to work with people and make cities a better place to live. City planners are concerned with all the things that affect the quality of the life of a city. For instance, the buildings, the houses, the playgrounds and the parks, the traffic, subways, stores, all those things affect the life of a city and how you enjoy the city. 
A city is made up of many different things. Big buildings, small buildings, office buildings, factories, fire stations, places to play, places to work, schools and churches, department stores and markets, old homes, new homes, apartment buildings, streets and subways, some parts dying, some parts being born. But most of all, cities are neighborhoods. The city is always changing. It changes because people change, but the city is made for people to live in. Just as you and I grow and change, so do cities. Just as our parents help us grow up, city planners try to do the same for cities. But the city is a very busy place. It has many, many people living there, working there, and going from place to place. Sometimes things go wrong because the city isn't taken care of in the right way. There are a lot of things that can go wrong with the city. Houses are too crowded, there's too much noise, garbage in the streets, too much traffic, dirty air, houses become run down, streets aren't safe, and people lose the feeling that they belong to their neighborhoods. A city planner is a lot like a doctor. She tries to fix things that are wrong and work with people to make their neighborhoods a better place. I work in Chinatown, Philadelphia. Here we have many problems because no one thought about how Chinatown should be able to grow. There are not enough homes, stores, parks, or playgrounds for the people who want to live here. There is too much traffic and it's even dangerous for children to play on the sidewalks. A highway was planned to go through and knock down many houses and the children were also going to lose their school. But the people of Chinatown got together to save their neighborhood. We worked with people who planned the highway to draw up a better plan which everybody liked. Now, the school can be saved and a new park built over the highway. My name is Martin. I've got this great snake named Nigel. Can you imagine he disappeared? Yeah, I'm sure a boa constrictor makes a good pet, but I don't like snakes that much. Well, what kind of animal would your parents want you to have? Well, you know, I'm not sure my mommy wants me to have any kind of pet. She says it's got to be a kind of pet that won't throw up. Oh, well, well that leaves boas out anyway. They do sometimes. She said also that she's tired of cleaning up messes. But I know one kind of pet that, you know, it doesn't grow up. What's that? A pony. I really want a pony. Oh, wow. They're big. Where would you keep it? Oh, Martin, I keep it anywhere. Besides, your bow constrictor is supposed to be nine feet long. Well, they cost a lot of money, don't they? Yep, about $200. Calm down, Martin, and tell me, how did it happen? 
Well, he was on the back of my bicycle because so I was going to take him over to the museum to um, put him with Scott's boa. And I was walking my bicycle and talking to Brandon when the fight started. And I went over to break up the fight. And then I looked back towards my bicycle and the bag was gone. So I started screaming and hollering and asking everybody if they'd seen it. And, um, and... And that's what happened. All right, just take it easy. Why don't we go home, phone the police, and wait for them to call? I'm sure they can find it. I wonder who could have done it. No, Sergeant, not a boy, a boa. A snake, you know. It was probably Larry. Boy, I thought he was a friend. I don't know who would want to steal a snake, but he was stolen. Maybe he was just cheesing me. Yes, I think it would be a good idea if you came over. Then my son could give you all the particulars. Thank you. Maybe some of the other white kids put him up to it. Oh, Martin, come on. Well, everybody has to take sides sometimes. That's how the fight started. Hello, Brenda. You seem interested in snakes. Uh, are snakes worth a lot of money? Well, that depends on what you have in mind. How about boas? Yeah, they can be expensive. It all depends on how big they are. Would you be interested in buying a boa? Do you have a boa? Yes, I got it as a present. Although I really can't use it. Actually, I need some money. Where did you get the snake from? I told you. I got it for a present. How long ago? About three or four weeks ago, I think. What's his name? Oh, never mind. If you don't wait want a minute, one. wait a minute. I already have a boa, but I know somebody that would really be interested in this snake. Why don't we take a ride over there? I really don't have the time now. You want to get rid of the snake, don't you? Come on, Brenda, it'll only take a minute. A boa in a bag on the back of a bike is a good place to ride when you're going on a Tricky there or something might be funny. Why did you do it, Brenda? I figured Larry for a joke. But you, I just don't get. I'm sorry, Martin. I really am. I don't even understand it myself. I didn't want to hurt you. I was sure your father would get you another boa. I don't care. You stole Nigel. I thought you were my friend. I still am, even if you don't believe me. I needed that money, Martin. I really wanted that pony. Hey, Scott, she thought she could get $200 for Nigel. Boas aren't worth that much, dummy. Ever think of earning the money? Martin, the sergeant is waiting to talk to you in the kitchen. How did you get Nigel back? What are you doing here, Brenda? Well, it seems Brenda here decided to borrow Nigel for a little while. <laughs> Or should I say, como estas, like the Spanish do? For today, we're making a Mexican treat called guacamole. It can't be beef. Mexican-Americans throughout the states love guacamole. They think it's great. And so it is, as you'll soon see. So get in your gear and follow me. Two avocados, two avocados here, and one tomato. One tomato, my dear, I can hardly wait to have a taste of that delicioso avocado. But if you can't get fresh ones, canned ones will do. And it's a good idea to have a grown-up along just to make sure that things do not go wrong. Now, first you have to peel the avocado. Then mash them up along with the tomato. Then chop up the roasted chili peppers, add a little salt, and mix up all the goodies together. Now what you've got is a fabulous dip to serve with corn or potato chips. And when you have passed the guacamole around, you'll be so surprised at all the friends you found. For everyone loves a new taste treat, whether they're from Mexico or 18th Street. Another nice thing about 
about avocados is the wonderful thing you can do with the pit. Just place it in water, then put it in the dark, and after some days, you'll see it start to grow. Then take the pit, plant it in a pot, and what do you think that you have got? The beginning of what will turn out to be a great and noble avocado tree. Make some guacamole, then plant a tree. Why don't you make a new friend, make a new friend, make a new friend today? Why don't you make a new friend, make a new friend, make a new friend today? Everybody is uptight about what they're called. What do you want to be called? Colored? Negro? Afro-American? Black? Luther. Come on, come on, come on. 